Okay, welcome back um to um your PHY 101. Um elementary mechanics heat and properties of matter. In the last um in the last uh, class, in the last um class that we had last week, we um began our study, of course, um a revision, um, a kind of um facilitation on on your on um measurements of um heat okay and um the basic equation that we derived is this equation we said that the amount of heat stored in a body is jointly proportional to um its mass um and um inversely proportional to the uh, let me check and be sure that um I am actually recording you. Please give me some time. Let me see uh, to be sure that. Um, give me a minute. I will come back to this. Yes, I, I think we are we are recording it so that um, nobody miss those that have missed the class will have it uh, available. OK, so let me take you back to the script. Now, this is what we did last week. Um. This is the basic equation that tells us about what we call the specific heat capacity. Okay, and you have it there. So what that tells us is that the amount of heat stored in a body is proportional to its mass. And then also the temperature difference. That's the basic thing that we did. Um, and I told you the reason for that. The reasons are one, that um, uh, first, you notice that the larger the mass, the greater will be the quantity of it. It has a capacity to store. And the greater the difference in temperature, the greater the amount of heat anybody has the capacity to store. All right. And we also say that and we also said that the capacity to store heat depends on the characteristic properties of the materials involved. So if I have um, a big block of metal and um, another block of uh, wood of the same mass, right? You notice that both of them can store heat um, differently. That um, they will have different amount of heat to um, different capacity to hold heat. But I, I think I gave an example of water, hot water stored in cup and water at the same temperature stored in a bucket. And and you you were able to see that the one stored in the the water in the cup um, got colder. Um, um, faster than the one in the bucket because the quantity of water in the bucket um, was more massive than the quantity of water in the cup. These are the things that we did last time. All right. Now, um, so this is the definition of your specific capacity. Okay. And then we solve this example. We solve this example. Um, we solve this example. And I gave the following examples as taken. So I want to unmute all of us at this stage to find out if there were some of you or that if anybody solved these um, problems and uh, if there is any experience to discuss. So let me un um, allow everybody to unmute and uh, let us see whether we can discuss this. Did, did you solve all these problems that I gave? No, sir. I come on and on. Is there anybody that solved this problem? No, I'm, I'm not. If you have not solved the problem, do not, do not, do not speak. I only want those that have solved the problem to save time. Okay, nobody solved the problem. Okay, um, I will try. I think I will transfer these problems to the um to the um discussion forum. I've also asked um some questions on the discussion forum. Some people have been att attempting. Have you found those questions there? No, have you seen the discussion forum? no, sir. No, sir. Okay, go to the first page. I have posted some questions. Okay, I don't think it's on this one. I, I think it's on um, page um, 102. So I will open, I will transfer these questions to the discussion forum for all of you to try to um, attempt it. Let me repeat one thing that I think you have to know. Um, these problems will 
uh, give you deeper understanding of this simple equation that we have written. I could have asked many more questions, okay? But I gave these three so that I will not distract you, okay? In, the, in this first one here, I think it has to do with um, um, conversion of um, frictional energy to heat energy, okay? Right? So I think that's what, and this one has to do with um, potential energy um, at the height, okay? Of the water, so if the water falls through the height of this, that is of this, and then uh, the potential energy is going to be converted to heat energy, okay, at the bottom. All right, so it's just like what happens at the waterfall. Take the temperature. If you are take the temperature at the surface. Um, at the height, that's at the water, and then go down to the bottom, um, that's with the, the bottom of the four, take the temperature, um, you will notice that there is a slight difference. Reason being that the um, potential energy of the water at that height, of the height of the four, is converted to the kinetic energy, that's the energy of motion as it falls, and then to the kinetic energy converted to the um, heat energy, all right? Um, at the bottom of the four. Now, this one has to do with um, the kinetic energy of the bullets, okay? And then um, and, uh, if it hits maybe um, something, then um, the, the kinetic energy is converted to um, heat energy. So these are the principles. And until you have solved these problems, I am not quite sure that you have mastered the, 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 the principles. Because this equation, the way I have written it, is not a mathematical equation. Let me, let me, let me return to that. This equation, this equation, as you can see, is telling us a physical principle, is telling us about a physical principle. So it is not an algebraic equation. It is a physical equation, an equation that tells us about you know, one quantity related to other quantities and a physical principle. Now, it is, if um, um, we know this, that we can talk about the measurement of heat. All right. So now let us um, go to uh, continue this discussion. And uh, let me share another script um, that is going to allow us to discuss, um, to continue our discussion on this. All right. So um, let me take you to the next script there. All right. Can you see this script, my second script here, very well? Measurement of heat, too. Can yes. you see it clearly? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. All right, very well. Yes, All right. Yes, now, I want, you see, um, because we have already lost time, I don't want to mute anybody, and I don't want uh, people to distract the class. If you, I mean, if you disturb, then I will mute. But I would have preferred leaving the class open the way it is so that I can ask you questions as I go to find out how much of what we are discussing um, you have followed, okay? So, so once again, you are welcome. Um, now, I have just said that in the previous unit, we saw that heat as a form of energy um, could be converted to other forms of energy, okay? And, and, and used to do mechanical work, isn't it? Um, you found that the, let me, let me pick a pointer. You found that the amount um, of heat stored in a body depended on its mass, change in temperature, and bonding forces and arrangement of atoms or molecules. And, and these arrangements are characteristic properties which vary from one body to another. That's what we saw. Now, in this unit, we want to take a look at measurement of heat. Measurement, I correct this to read measurement, measurement of using the method of mixtures. The unit, you should be able to define and calculate specific capacity. You have already defined that in the previous unit. Two, Please mute yourself. The person allowing the child to uh, cry in the background. I don't want to mute you. I can do that from here. Mute yourself. It's a class. It's a large class. All right. 
Now, you should be able to define and calculate specific latent heats. When, why am I using the word heat? All right. You should be able to define and calculate specific heat, uh, latent heats. Now, there are two types of, um, or three uh, types of latent heats, but we'll be discussing two, um, namely the latent heat of uh, fusion or of melting, if you like, uh, latent heat of vaporization, and then um, latent, uh, latent heat of sublimation. Now, I, I will tell you what sublimation is, but we are not going to talk about the latent heat of sublimation. We mention it so that uh, you will know that um, um, that uh, this is one of um, the transitions um, that we have um, under this topic. Now, you should also be able to apply method of mixtures to measure the specific capacity and specific heat latent heats. All right. Now, specific heat capacity, heat capacity, and latent heats. Now, in the last unit, I commented that heat measurement ultimately depends on measurement of temperature, okay? Uh -huh. You may now ask, how is the change in temperature related to the amount of heat? How is it related to the amount of heat? Related to the amount of heat in a body. The answer to this question will depend on the kind of work the heat that um, the heat in the body is used for, that is, the amount of heat in the body is doing in terms of the thermal motions or arrangements of its constituent particles, that is atoms, molecules, and so on. Now, of course, you know already that by definition of temperature, the change in temperature can only occur if heat added to or taken from a body goes to increase or decrease, if you like, thermal velocities or average kinetic energy of its constituent particles. That is the definition of temperature. We said temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the atoms, molecules, and so on of a body. Now, if this is the case, we measure heat content or heat capacity of a body in terms of the change in temperature. So we can do that, okay? We can measure. That's what it means. Let me write that. We can measure um, the heat content of a body or the heat added or taken away from a body um, in terms of the change in temperature. We can call these sensible heat. Sensible, why? Because um, any heat sensor or a thermometer, any device that can detect the change in temperature called thermometer or any sensor can detect the change. On the other hand, if heat added or taken from a body goes to break the, the bonds or make the bonds, that's to create new bonds or to break bonds, then we'll be talking about change in phase. So that's why I'm saying um, if the heat added or taken from a body um, break bonds or make new bonds, then um, it is possible. So it is not possible for us to detect the change in temperature because the heat going in is doing work to break the bonds or to make new bonds. For example, when ice is melting, okay, then the bonds in the solid state are being broken to free the molecules of water to arrange themselves in the liquid phase. Okay, right? Now, if um, we, after the, the, the process is complete, then you now have all of your um, water in the liquid phase. If you continue to add um, heat to the system, say by heating it on fire or on a Bunsen burner, now you will notice that the temperature will increase again from zero degrees Celsius all the way up to 100 degrees Celsius. At this point, um, of course, you will have transition, boiling, isn't it? Or vaporization. Um, from, in other words, the, the transition from the liquid state to the gaseous state. 
which we call water vapor. All right. So here is the point there. So you notice that during this phase change, the, 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 the changes in phase, there is the breaking of bonds. So the heat you are uh, supplying to the system will now break the bonds. Okay. When the, uh, the, the, the ice is melting and when the water is boiling. At these two points, the temperature will not change. That's why you call it um, melting point. That is a fixed temperature and boiling point, which is another fixed temperature. All right. So take note of that. So I said the sensors cannot detect anything. So the heat is hidden, is hidden or latent. Let me let, let me embolden this hidden. The, the word latent means hidden, all right? So you cannot measure this uh, change of phase in terms of change of temperature. Can you see? You cannot, um, you cannot measure the heat, the amount of heat added, okay, in terms of change of temperature, since the temperature will not change when there is a change in phase, okay? Now, the concepts are illustrated graphically here. Look at it here. Now, this is... Latent heat, that is the hidden heat. Notice that this is a temperature axis. This is the quantity of heat added. So this um, a graph is a plot of um, temperature against the amount of heat. So you will see that um, when there is fusion, that's melting, okay? This is not water. So I'm just uh, drawing a general diagram. So you notice that there is um, um, constant, I mean, the, there is a change in phase. And the temperature is constant until all um, of the of the substance has melted, and then there is the change in temperature. So that's why I'm saying this is sensible. This can be detected by a thermometer. So that's why most books of the duration or any or writing um taking away from him um and then there is a change in temperature now by the time you get to the boiling point the temperature remains constant and all of the liquid boils over this time like this okay so after that then you are in the state the temperature can rise once again so i have decided to draw the diagram again so the b part of the diagram is this so this is called fusion latent heat of fusion melting. This is heat capacity of liquid, right? So in other words, the heat capacity is taken care of by the change in temperature, but fusion, latent heat cannot be um, discussed in terms of change in temperature. When you get to this point, that's at um, um, temperature E, this is constant. This is temperature F is also constant. Okay, now during these two temperatures, there is change of phase. So you can see that you have flat portion of the graph at this temperature. Okay, I hope you understand that. So this is the latent heat of vaporization. This is the latent heat of fusion. This is the heat capacity of, of the liquid. And this is the heat capacity in the gaseous state. I hope you understand that. This is a very simple diagrammatic representation of what I think you already know. All right. Okay, so let me arrange this so that um, um, all right. Um, all right. So that's how it's supposed to be. All right. So I have explained this. Okay. So therefore, um, you see that um, in figure B, we have latent heat of fusion at constant temperature, E, heat capacity of the liquid state at temperature difference F of E, look at it there, F of E, I mean F to E, I beg pardon. That is from here, temperature change from here to here as the temperature is rising. Then you have this transition like this. This is heat capacity. All right, this is the part that can be measured using heat capacity. Then you go ahead again. 
um, then you have latent heat of vaporization at constant temperature F. Look at it there, at this temperature. Okay, F. And then from this point, from my F to G, okay, um, from my F, that is from my F to G, that is from this temperature to this temperature, then you have the heat capacity in of the gaseous state. Okay, so now let us um, quickly do the definitions. Heat added to a body can either change its temperature or change its phase. So that is all that I have been saying. So once heat is added to a system, it can lead to the change in temperature or it can lead to the change in phase. Now, there are other things that um, addition of heat um, can um, bring about. For instance, we'll be talking about change in size, which is expansion, okay, right? And then other things associated with that. But until we get to that part, what concerns us here is a change in phase or change in temperature. Now, measurement of heat capacity, um, me measurement of heat capacity makes use, not heat, makes use of change in temperature while measurement of heat of fusion or vaporization makes use of latent heat. I think this point is clear. Let me let me stop and, and see whether you understand. Let me try to um, um, take everybody to where I uh, where I am now. I hope you understand this point that I've made here. Uh, maybe um, later on I will allow you to ask questions. Okay. So this is these diagrams have not been drawn, but I've drawn them just to create a picture that um, will make the concept rest in your mind. Now, the amount of heat in a body we have already said is. Q, which is directly proportional to M and change in temperature, would see as the specific heat capacity of the material, or that my C is equal to Q over M delta T. Now, the unit is joule per kilogram per Kelvin. Now, I think at the end of this, um, I, I, I'm going to ask you um, a very simple question based on what you have in your uh, course material and ask you to discuss. Uh, with me. All right. Now, notice that um, M and delta T, um, that if my M, if my M, if M and delta T are one unit, for instance, one kilogram, if my M is one kilogram and my change in temperature is one degree Celsius, so one times one would be one, so I'll have C equal to Q. So this my equation two will become C equal to Q, isn't it? So now it is only in this circumstance that we define what is called specific. That is a specific heat, the heat um, of the heat, the amount of heat required to raise one unit, in this case, one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius, by a unit change in temperature. So this is the way I want you to remember it. Specific heat capacity is the amount of heat required to change the temperature of one kilogram of a body by one degree Celsius, all right? Okay, now if mass M is considered, that is if the mass is no longer one unit, it's no long, longer one kilogram, say two kilograms, three kilograms, then we have to multiply this my specific heat by the mass involved, isn't it? then what we will be defining is no longer specific, okay? It's called heat capacity or thermal capacity. That's the way it is in your book, um, heat capacity or thermal capacity, okay? So heat or thermal capacity is the amount of heat required to change the temperature of any mass M of a body by one degree Celsius or by a unit change in temperature. That's what it means, okay? so. You can see that my C from this definition, um, my capital C here represents my thermal capacity and it is simply the product of the mass and the specific capacity. Okay, so if it is not in your book like this, please take note of it. I have written it like this, that's my question three, to help you to be able to solve some problems if they come in this way. Now, 
are waste area. So putting my equation two in equation three, that is my equation two is this. And I come here, wherever I have C here, I write Q over M delta T. Then I will have my C equal to MC and my C. So I'll have M times um, my C is Q all over M delta T. Now I notice that my M and M will cancel, isn't it? So what I will have will then be equal to Q all over delta T. Therefore, what I'm saying is that heat or thermal capacity is simply the amount of heat all over the change in temperature. So the unit of capital C. Now your book uses H, all right? I've used, it, I've used capital C for thermal or heat capacity, and I've used small c for my specific heat capacity. So take note of what I have done there, all right? So, and then the unit should be joule per Kelvin or joule per degree Celsius, okay? Since there is no mass. In the other one, the unit, you notice you had um, this, the unit of mass here, which is per kilogram here, and the unit of temperature per degree Celsius. I hope you understand this. Okay, next, um, we define latent heat. Now, since change in temperature is not involved, the amount of heat All right, I hope you can still see my face uh, once again. Um, they have just taken light. So here is what I'm saying. All right, I'm saying that we want to define latent heat. I'm saying since change in temperature is not involved, the amount of heat will then be directly proportional to the number of bond pairs to be broken, isn't it? Um, to free the atoms or molecules as the case may be, to rearrange themselves in a new phase. All right? So what does that mean? It means, therefore, that the quantity of heat that is used to do that would be directly proportional to the mass, okay? So I can write it this way. Q is directly proportional to the mass, okay? Or if I introduce a constant of proportionality L, then my Q should be equal to L times M, or that my L is going to be Q over M, okay? So this is called the um, latent heat. Now, when we are talking about about latent heat here, I've not said whether it is for fusion or fusion or vaporization or sublimation. So it means I must first of all define what kind of latent heat am I talking about? But before then, notice that the quantity L is characteristic of the material of which the body is made. So in other words, the, um, in most books and also in your course material, you should have a table of um, the latent heat of some substances. It should be found in your book. So you look for it. Um, so, and then the unit is going to be, of course, the unit of um, heat is joule. The unit of, ma um, of mass is um, a kilogram. So that, therefore, I should write this as joule per kilogram. So that would be the unit of latent heat. All right. So after this, you should be able to solve some problems in your book. Okay. Now, um, now, there are different changes of state. I have just said that. Change from solid to liquid state is called fusion or melting. From liquid to gas is called vaporization. And from solid to gas is called sublimation. So I want to ask a question at this stage. So I'm going to unmute you um, so that you can answer this um, question to see whether you understand um, some certain things here. Let me ask a question. Can you all hear me? If you can hear me, please speak. 
I can hear you. Yes, yes sir. We can hear you. Okay, you can hear you, sir. I can hear you, sir. I can hear you, sir. All right. Now, here is a question. What is the difference between um vaporization and evaporation? Vaporization. Let, let me let me write the question here. Let me write it somewhere. Is it change from liquid to gaseous stage? Oh, wait, let me, um, let me write it so everybody can hear me. Uh, don't worry, the question is clear. Is changing Please mute yourself. Mute yourself. Mute yourself. I am trying to ask a question. Peter and uh, Peter, mute yourself and not, don't disturb the class. Please. I don't want to mute you because I want people to answer questions. Love you, Kelvin. Mute yourselves, sellers. This is not the time for you to attend to your customers or your uh, family. Please. What is the difference between uh, evaporation and vaporization? You notice that in this my definition. We did. Uh, we didn't talk about. Uh, we do not associate. Um, notice that we have not associated um, the concept of la uh, latent heat with eva ev um, uh, evaporation. We have not. We we say latent heat of vaporization. So the question now is, yeah. what is the difference between evaporation and vaporization? What is the difference? Yeah. Hello, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm listening. Okay, for evaporation, yeah, evaporation to my own understanding is the change of, of gas to liquid. While vaporization is change, change of gas of, to, li to liquid. Change of uh, gas to liquid is evaporation. To liquid is evaporation. While vaporization is change of from liquid to gas. While vaporization is what? From liquid to gas to gaseous state. Okay, okay, I'm, all right. Yeah. Let us, I'm um, um, sure, follow the show. Hmm? Next person. Hello, sir. I didn't get Go ahead. Okay, um, evaporation is convert uh, matter from know. liquids uh, to gas. Yeah. Hello, sir. Uh -huh. yeah. I said evaporation yeah. is convert yeah. matter from liquid <laughs> to gas. Yeah. While, yeah. hello. While vaporization mm -hmm. is convert matter from solid uh, okay. liquid state to gas yeah. state. Okay. I have an answer. To yes, sir. Yes. I have an answer. I will allow, to I will allow, I will allow you to discuss it before I intervene. Yes, sir. sir, I have an answer. Yes, Can I speak? Yes, go ahead. Vaporization is the is the change from liquid okay. to gas. At a specific temperature, Which but one? evaporation yeah. occurs at any temperature. All right, all right, okay. Now let us examine the answers. Um, let let me um let me remove the chair so that you can see my you can see my face. All right. Now, um, the, uh, who was the last person that just spoke? Stella. I, I spoke last time. The last person, go to 
Stella, I'm the one that's... What's your name? Stella. Stella, okay. Right. Now, the, um, um, the, the, only the last answer given there was correct. And I am surprised that at, um, at the level of your 100 level, uh, at your 100 level physics, we do not know the operation. Uh, I want to answer. And I have and stop and explain it to me. Um, um, let me let me mute all and explain. That was the answer. So that you you understand. The correct answer is that a both evaporation first before I I I explain her answer. Her answer is correct. Evaporation and vaporization are all transition from, from liquid to gaseous state. When you have evaporation. You have conversion from liquid to gas. Also, when you have a vaporization, you also have conversion from liquid to gaseous state. So both of them are transitions from liquid to gaseous state. But there is a difference between them. And the difference is this. In the case of evaporation, um, the transition can occur at any temperature. For as long as there is liquid, evaporation will occur. Is it clear there? But when you are talking about vaporization, we are talking about boiling. That is, it is the transition from liquid to gas at a constant temperature. That is what she was saying. Now, that is why you have the boiling point of water at 100 degrees Celsius. For alcohol at 70, uh, 78 degrees Celsius, one fixed temperature. But now, um, if I may ask, I think um, the, the person that um, gave that answer was right. But if I may ask once again, okay? Um, why do we have evaporation? I mean, yes, evaporation occurring at all temperatures. Why should it be like that? Who can attempt? So because of it. Let me try. Yes, try. Um, I is feel the reason. Please go ahead. I'm listening. Um, just the way water from the soil moves to the earth, moves to the sky. I feel that is the way evaporation occurs also because if you keep your bucket of water outside and you come back the next morning, you tend to notice that it's not in the same level again. So I can't really yes, give a... We know that evaporation has occurred, but what causes wow. the <clears throat> Hello, sir. Can, what? Hello, sir. Can I speak, sir? Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Can I speak? somebody else help? I think she has help. Hello, sir. Okay, to my own, to my own understanding, even I'm at sure, I'm sure. yes, sir. To my own understanding about that, even at low temperature, there are some molecules that can still escape. I can still escape. Yeah. At yeah. Thank you very much, Peter. So much. of water from the surface. Now I am not All right. Um, I can see my back now. Uh, all right, I think it's coming back, so I will mute. Uh, evaporation occurs at any temperature because when air right. molecules collide with the surface, they transfer energy to water molecules. Like, no, it's not. They do not uh, collide with the surface. Here is, you see, you are trying to polish what Farun Shaw said. It's correct. He is correct. It is due to the collision. You see, we have talked about thermal motion. Yes. All right. At any temperature above absolute zero, we should expect that molecules are in some degree of thermal motion, isn't it? And to that extent, they collide with themselves and with the walls of the container. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. so, case of gas is anyway but now when they collide with themselves you notice that once liquid and uh, you have liquid you also have the surface of the liquid so this is a surface this is below the surface 
So the molecules close to the surface, all right, that collide with themselves. Some of them, the motion might be directed upwards. So those that are directed upwards, so once they are heated by another molecule, they move upwards, they, you, they move out of the surface upwards, isn't it? Let me let me draw a diagram to show that. Give me a minute, let me try to draw a diagram to show that. It's not a difficult concept, okay? Um, let me draw the diagram, then I'm going to bring you to see. So this is um, molecules. So um, let me share what I've drawn. So what you see here are molecules. I have molecules that are close to the surface. Okay. Now these molecules, okay, these are the molecules. So I have molecules like that. So you notice that they are colliding with themselves. So if this molecule knocks this one, now this one might tend to move this way also. So if um, it moves this way, then it's going to break uh, through from the surface and go outside. Some of them are not to uh, move inwards. Some are going like this. So this is random motion, isn't it? So the molecules can go uh, in any direction because it is random motion like this, all right? So that's what we are saying. So the molecules that are close to the surface, right, could be knocked in the outside outward direction and so they escape from the attraction of the molecules isn't it that is those of them that have sufficient energy to break free from the attraction of the remaining molecules inside the liquid that is those that have sufficient kinetic energy can escape from the and go into space that is what we mean by evaporation and it occurs at the surface it is a surface phenomenon it is a surface phenomenon. Take note of that. It is a surface phenomenon. Let me write that. So three, um, um, it is a surface phenomenon. It is a surface phenomenon. That's one. So it occurs at the surface too. It occurs at a at any temperature. It occurs at any temperature. Any temperature of the liquid. All right, of the liquid. It occurs at any temperature. It occurs at any temperature. Right. So those are the key things there. Now, whereas in the case of boiling, boiling, boiling occurs. Now you know that boiling involves whole body.
unmute myself. Um, evaporation occurs at the surface of the liquid. For as long as there is a liquid, you are going to uh, the liquid will have a surface, and, and the molecules near the surface that have sufficient energy, sufficient kinetic energy, can escape from the surface, can escape through the surface. Two, um, these can occur at any temperature of the liquid. That's uh, that's evaporation. Okay, but boiling, you notice, occurs and involves the whole volume. Now, you notice that usually um, when you heat a substance, the bubbles will form near the, surf uh, the surface of the, uh, uh, the source of the heat, isn't it? And then some of these bubbles now will begin to roll themselves and then come out and burst at the surface. So the whole volume is involved. It is not a surface phenomenon. That's what I'm saying. Two, it occurs at a fixed temperature called the boiling point. That is for the case of um, the... Um, the, for the case of um, the evaporation. Evaporation is synonymous with boiling. All right, so this is what I want you to, to understand. So that's the difference. I, I think um, I should try and round up, it's raining. And so it's affecting the connectivity. So be patient, and I'm going to close. I still have 81 of you here. So let me quickly um, um, finish this script um, and then, um, I can take on some of your questions. All right. So now here is the script that I was sharing earlier on. And so specific heat, um, I have defined um, specific heat before. Um, I am, sorry, I'm defining specific heat of fusion, specific latent heat, a big pardon, of fusion, specific latent heat of fusion. So I said there are different changes of state. Change of uh, from solid to liquid state is called fusion. It's called fusion or melting. From liquid to uh, gas is called vaporization. And from solid to gas is called sublimation. All right? So let me ask a question. Can you give an example of um, a substance that Sublime. Give me yes, an, sir. Yes, sir. An example of a, a, a substance. Camphor. Yes. Camphor. Yes. Very well. Very well. So you know. So you see. Room you pressure. Camphor at the corner of your room. Yes, it is in size, isn't it? Those solid. That it is changing now. from from the to the gaseous state, isn't it? Without transiting through the state. Hello, now, like... there is one more thing that I Hello, want sir. you to go and investigate. Please allow me to finish. I will, I will, I will, I will give time for us to answer questions. I want you to also take um, go and study about what we call the triple point. I think I've mentioned this earlier on. And I think I've, I've set questions on this. Um, I want to believe so. I, I am, and I think in the course of the revision, I will also show you this. Now, the questions I asked there, will require your firm understanding of what we mean by the triple point of um of um, water. Okay, triple point. Now, triple point here in the sense that um when um ice is melting, all right, you have liquid, you have solid for as long as it has not completed its melting, all right, at normal atmospheric pressure, you will still have the ice, you have liquid, and because there is evaporation, you also have the gaseous state. So in other words, you have three phases of the same substance coexisting in equilibrium. And we call that the triple point. I had mentioned this in my opening class with you. So please, I want you to go and study that. I will um, ask you a question on that, perhaps through the, um, to, uh, the discussion forum to deepen your understanding of that. So then we have that specific latent heat of fusion is the amount of heat required to change a unit mass, one kilogram, if you like, of a body from solid phase to liquid phase at constant temperature. At constant temperature. Now, in the case of water, what is this constant temperature? Abnormal atmospheric pressure. What's the constant temperature? Of fusion, um, the latent heat of fusion. You said latent heat of fusion Zero is the amount degree. of heat required to change the unit mass. For instance, one zero degrees Celsius, isn't it? For the case of water, 
Yes, all right. Yes. So that's what I want you to note. Yeah. All right. Now, if there are impurities, okay, the um, the temperature might be slightly above that, isn't it? My slightly yes, uh, might be slightly. Up. Now, we also define specific latent heat of vaporization as the amount of heat required to change a unit mass, one kilogram, if you like, of a body from liquid phase to gaseous phase at temperature in case of water, what the atmosphere is. Okay, okay. For the case of water, that should be 100 degrees of change. When your mat's not standing. Under the research just. So some of you that are turning on your camera, can you look this and who is that one that just walked across our, our screen with short skirt for God's sake? Uh -uh. People will open brasses. That's nonsense. People should be conscious of what they do, please. This is a class for crying out loud. You need to calm down. How will now. you be naked? How will you be naked and, and be turning on your, your, your video, I mean your camera, whatever? Madam Anenche, oh, Madam Anenche, please turn off your calm. camera. We are tired you of seeing your, 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 your nakedness. You need to calm yes. down, no. You know that we are having to lecture at the same time. Then you, then you should dress well before coming to lecture. Stay with this why, why are you guys putting your video on for the first like time? Who, is, who want to look at you guys' face? Eh? Ah, God, save this Nigeria. This country is gone. <laughs> Turn off your camera now. Please, bros, bring the country back. Where the country gone to? Whenever we have class like this, we are adults. We should know we should switch up our audio and video. Things, uh, some people, I, I think they are in the kitchen. The uh, what's it called? Play that school, just slapping themselves. Gas to carry you to the bank 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 All right, so um, finally, we take a look at measurement technique. And I said the method that is suitable for the measurement of both um, specific capacity and latent heat um, 
um, is the method of mixtures. And um, that um, in this method, objects of different temperatures are placed in thermal contact. That is, they are placed in such a way that heat can flow from one to the other. So when there is flow of heat from one object to another, we say the two bodies are in thermal contact. Now, but then these two objects must be isolated from the rest of the surrounding, okay? And they are allowed to come to equilibrium. That is, they are allowed to come to the same temperature. A container that prevents heat transfer in or out of it is a lagged calorimeter. Is a lagged calorimeter. Well, since you are writing on the screen now, I think I have to remove it because I've said nobody should be writing on the screen. So I think um, let, let me stop at this point and take your questions. So um, let me unmute you so you can speak. All right. I think I want to stop here since I'm... Sir, I think, sir, um, can you please I would finish that explanation, please? We'll do that sir, please minute, help sir. us with the calculation, please. Can you please help us with the calculation? This is the time to answer questions. Please, before you do Yeah, you need to go and look for my Facebook or I buy. That's what I'm saying. I need to go and look for it. So I buy new. <laughs> so is here you come and talk about your family matter. How to buy textbook? Who should just be conscious? I beg. That's what lecture right now is is acting funny to us right. because you don't respect ourselves. So people so don't be writing on the board. You are not so you don't be writing on the board. You should know when you're in a meeting. You should know when you're out of meeting. You should be conscious, please. <laughs> now they are fault. Some of them they don't know how to use the device. They don't even know what the technology. Is. They are just misbehaving. Come on. <laughs> like please, if you are not contributing to the class, mute yourself. The button yeah. is there for a reason. So Sunday, that something people. No, no, just I think I'm difficulty. It is raining here, um, in Abuja where I am. Um, so therefore, um, I think um. Um, I want to stop here. In the next class, um, in the next class, I I will do some calculations. I'm not going to be able to wait until the next class. I will do this rec recording of the calculations on this, and then I will attach it um to your. I will send it to your um to your uh, course page for you to. I will do some examples excuse me, for you to see how those things work, then I will also ask you some questions. Let me repeat Thank what I have said earlier on. Please 
when I ask questions, go and answer them. Two, do not give your TMA questions to be solved by people without you being part of it. Be part of the solution so that you can learn from the questions or from the solutions. You may set up a, a group for solution, not a chat group. You, so even if you set up, you see, I this I, I noticed that you people um um set up a, a chat group so that you chat on other things and not on the subject. You're right, sir. You're correct. Not on the, please, I don't want people to talk now. Let me finish what I'm saying. Those that want to ask questions, please lift up your hands so that as soon as I finish, I will just go over to the questions, those that are ready. I'll pick just about two or three. Here is the point. Set up groups to solve problems and learn from those problems. If there are problems you are unable to resolve, bring them through the discussion forum. And when we have discussed, I will make my own contributions and you, it will, uh, it, let me say here that from uh, my assessment of the way you answer questions, very few of us understand the basic principles of physics. Most of what we are doing here are things that you have already done. And if you are not familiar with them, then you have to really stoop down and read the content of your course material and be ahead of the class. Because time um, we are already, I think, in the fourth week and we have four weeks left, All right? So you have to read ahead of the class. Okay? It is not in all classes that I'll be teaching. Some of them I will just come and ask questions on the topics. Maybe when I come in the next class, I will not just um, teach anything on heat transfer or um sorry um i think the next unit has to do with the expansion okay i will not um, actually come to teach expansion i will just summarize it and then i will solve some problems and then we will leave that i will ask questions answer some questions and we'll leave that then i will also do the same thing for um possibly uh heat transfer part of heat transfer except the parts that have to do with um, calculations and interpretation. Gabriel Boniface, your question. Okay. Good evening, sir. Yes, sir. Good evening. Please realize yes, that it is raining here, so make your question short. Okay. So I don't know if there is any link for the group form where we can be getting messages. Because no, most you, are, time... you, you form... No. I don't have any the network cares about it. It's already I don't think my phone has class leader and let him um have contact with me. The one that you all vote and agree that you should lead the class. It should be a disciplined person. It should be okay. it can be male or female and somebody who has understanding of the course so that he can make positive contributions to what you are doing it's not it's not politics it's about leadership for the for for, for purpose of learning so it's a group okay. that no that i want to before right it's a large class i think it's 15000 i've not checked the last time it was over a thousand or something, but it is um it is yeah you get all, um ninety percent of this class to pass is always uphill and difficult task for me because you are understanding because your entry behavior is very low and your understanding does not seem to have improved because most of them. okay all right so now yes, Boniface yes sir I think I've answered your question. Uh, yes, sir, but I did not hear you that. that uh, uh, Enenche, Sir, it's the same thing I wanted to ask. Enenche, Sir, it's the same thing I wanted to ask, so. Okay, next person. Aminu Al Amin. I mean, well, I mean, while I'm, I'm, when you guys trying to connect, 
Hello, sir. Onyeka, I cannot hear you. Um, your 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 network is very. Poor. Network is bad, sir. Yes, I have I have only one question, sir. Aminu Alamin. Sir. Sir, so where Go can I get the recordings of this lecture? Yes, where can I get the recording of this lecture? I think it's the network problem. Sir, Aminu Alamin, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I said, where, where can I get the recordings of this lecture? Or, 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 of this particular class. Or a new wine blessing. Uh, Alamin, I, I, I let somebody else speak, then I'll give you a chance since um, your network is poor. Or it's like the network is generally poor. Sir. Or Olua. Or Olua blessing. Okay, I think it's because of the rain, we are having poor connectivity. Uh, so please, I'm sending your questions. I cannot hear you now because uh, your lines are breaking. It is raining here. Maybe that's why your connectivity is poor. Okay? So, um, so whatever question that you are going to ask, please, um, you can put them down and you can... I can't hear you. The line is breaking. You are going to have it uh, this evening. It's always there. Nobody should be asking that. I have posted all. I always post up. Now, once I finish 10 minutes after that, at this, it will be available. In the next maybe 30 minutes, if it's available, I'll post it across at the course page. All right. So uh, with that, I think we have come to the end of um, this class. Thank you very much for your patience. I want to really um, apologize once again for our inability to start the class because of my involvement with um, the workshop as I spoke to you. And I want to thank those of you that um, have um, endured to the very end of it. Please, if you have any questions, bring them through the course page. And don't forget, I've said you should try and appoint a class leader to, um, from time to time, make contact um, with me. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Yeah. And good night, everyone. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes.